Hello and welcome to the newest episode of the New Year Six podcast. Today I'll be kicking off my Week Five, uh, you know, preview matchups. Uh, kicking it off tonight with uh, Utah at Oregon State, kind of the underrated game of the night, that Friday night game out west, and uh, you know, looking to kick things off this weekend with a splash. So if you haven't watched any of these preview videos before, just going to go team by team. List out keys to the game for both squads, then make an uh, official prediction of score, betting, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to start off with the road team, starting off with Utah. They are uh, traveling up to Corvallis for this one. Keys to the game for Utah here. Uh, Ultimately, I'm very curious to see, you know, from an injury perspective, the depth, not necessarily at QB because rising is still probably not going to play, but interested really at the uh, receiver position there. You know, Micah Pittman may not play. Uh, Minir McLean may not play. Uh, you know, Brent Keithy or Kuthi, however, however you pronounce his name, I think he's still going to play out. So I really want to see the depth of that receiver position. It's not a it's not a position that's really been hyper utilized uh, over the course of the you know over the course of the season. As a passing attack, Utah has not been one of the uh, the top ones out there. They've been 119th in the country, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But I want to see the depth at those receiver positions. Some of the younger guys or some of the newer guys. Um, you know, I want to see Landon King, Mikey Matthews, guys like that rotate into uh, the passing game. I know they've been very run heavy and run first. Uh, I'd like to see what happens if you uh, switch it up on them. Uh, you know, Utah State's going to be preparing for you to run on them. But Utah's the seventh best rushing defense in all of college football. The passing defense has little to be desired. And we'll get into that to, you know, when we cover, cover Utah State. But generally speaking, it's, uh, it's an opportunity where if Utah learns how to move the ball forward through their passing attack, they're going to open up some doors. They're going to find a way to get that happen. And I want to see what happens with the depth pieces and how they play a factor into that. In terms of what Utah has done well so far this season, they're the best third down defense in the country. Facts are facts. They if if Utah is in a if Oregon State's in a tough spot on third down, Utah will get a stop. They are the best at it in the country. And Utah or Oregon State is no slouch on that on third down on offense. They will provide a challenge for Utah for Utah here. But Utah is the best, and if they continue to hold on third down, bend, don't break, then Utah will win this game. I think that that defense coming up big on third down and and limiting the opportunities that Oregon State has is going to be a key factor for Utah to turn this game in their favor. And then finally, I think this is a you know kind of a rehash, but the passing attack has just not been there. Uh, Utah is 119th in the passing offense so far this year. That's not good enough to to get it done. Uh, I don't recall who the starter ended up being. I believe it's going to end up being Nate Johnson. Uh, could be wrong on that one. Um, but if that's the case, they need to establish some sort of passing a game early and often. Uh, they're, Oregon State's not going to see it coming. They're going to you know, uh, load the box, hit, you know, hit seven, knowing that Utah's a run-heavy team. They're just gonna they're gonna load the box, do what they need to do, and take take Utah's offense away from them. If Utah can open the playbook a little bit and can throw on this Oregon State team, then uh, you know Utah is going to swing the direction in their favor. So that's what I'm looking to see out of Utah. They you know, open up that passing game, use the depth at those uh, positions, and then stay strong on third down defense. Do what you've been doing on that front. When it comes to Oregon State, moving over to them for a second, uh, I am interested in that depth at linebacker. Uh, you know, fortunately, they've been fairly healthy in that. Uh, you know, fairly healthy as a roster as a whole. But I'm, I'm very interested to see how those linebackers can rotate through and what the depth looks like, specifically some of those younger guys, guys like Isaiah Chisholm, guys like Nico Taylor. Uh, Melvin Jordan, what can those guys do when they're they're rotating through, when they are going through the the ones and twos there? Um, generally speaking, it's a healthy squad, but you know if someone goes down, one of those guys is going to have to step up in the linebacker role. There's already one injury. Uh, you know, um, what's his name's out for the season there? Uh, you know, Makaya Tung, who I don't think played a whole whole lot, but you know the the uh, you know the odds are that if one goes down, someone needs to step up. And even if he's a depth piece, those depth pieces are going to have to rise to the occasion. So interesting to see what those linebackers can take care of uh, for Oregon State. In terms of where they've gone well so far this season, 
inside the 20, they are the best of the best. Uh, Oregon State has the best red zone offense in all of college football. If they're inside the 20, they're putting up points. They need to do that against Utah. Utah's red zone defense is no slouch. They're top 20. So if Oregon State can best them in that department and score when Utah doesn't want them to score, then Oregon State is going to you know, have that advantage and have that momentum going through the rest of the game, knowing that they took take you know, they, they took an opportunity away from Utah to get a stop and, you know, Oregon State's putting points up on the board. That's going to be big for Oregon State. So that's what I'm looking at uh, in terms of what Oregon State has done well, in terms of where they've struggled, kind of the opposite of where Utah struggled. Utah cannot pass the ball. Oregon State cannot defend the pass. They're outside the top 100. So it's going to be a matchup of which one of those rises to the occasion. Will Oregon State's pass defense or Utah's pass offense who will be the one that rises to the occasion? If it's Oregon State's past defense, Oregon State wins on their home turf. If they don't rise to the occasion, Utah's 5-0. and So those are my thoughts in terms of what Oregon State needs to do. Um, I'm curious of the depth of the linebacker spot, continuing to be a red zone menace on offense, and then getting that passing defense uh, you know, put together in a good way. So now it's time for my official prediction here. So Utah is the favorite. They are, or Oregon State is the favorite. They are favored by four points, and the total is 44. Uh, I'm going to take Oregon State to win. I'm going to take Oregon State to cover, and I'm going to take the over on 44. So final score prediction just from a modeling perspective is 25-20 Oregon State. I do like the offense is a little bit more, um, specifically Oregon State's. I, do, I think they, they're a little bit more put together. Utah, de- Utah defense is no joke, but I like Oregon State at home getting a rebound win uh, against a tough-looking Utah team. Don't get me wrong. This is, this is one of the games of the week. There's a reason I'm covering this. I know they're not two, quote-unquote, brand-name squads, but they've looked great so far this year, and you know they deserve the spotlight when it's available. But I really like the over on 44. That's uh, the one I would like a little bit more. Ultimately, it, it's tough either way um, just because the, the, the lines that were, uh, that were given for 4 and 44, as far as I'm concerned, those are borderline perfect. It's right on the margin of what I would need. But I'll take the over on 44 if that's what you're betting. But I think Oregon State wins a close one at home, gets that momentum back, and heads into the rest of their Pac-12 play fired up and ready to go. But that concludes this episode of the New Year Six podcast. What are your thoughts on this game? What are your keys to the game? Who do you think is going to win? Comment uh, you know, down below, whatever you got. Uh, tune in next time. We've got Florida at Kentucky. That'll be the next video. Uh, you know, kind of one of those sweeper games between two teams that are in the top twenty to in the top twenty-five, right on the outside of the top twenty-five, and a banger at noon. So, thank you all for for your time. Like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, yeah, tune in next time.